What is a neural network? Welcome to today's lesson. My name is Richard Kirshner. I'm with the Simply Learn team. Today we want to discuss the very basics of a neural network and what that is. So what's in it for you today? What is deep learning? What is artificial neural network? How does neural network work? Advantages of a neural network? Applications of a neural network? And the future of neural networks? Let's start with a brief history of the artificial intelligence. Hello, I am the human brain. This one's seeking enlightenment and has uh, sat and meditated. I am the most complex organ in the human body, and I help you to think, understand, and make decisions. And the secret behind all my power is a neuron. I'll get back to that in some time. Ever since the 1950s, scientists have been trying to mimic the functioning of a neuron and use it to build smarter robots. After a lot of trial and error, humans finally designed a computer that can recognize human speech. It was only after 2000 that humans were able to give birth to deep learning that was able to see and distinguish between different images and videos. So looking at that, let's dive into what is deep learning. Now your first thought might be it's the opposite of shallow learning. No, deep learning I liken to a magic box. And let's go in there and just take a look as to why it's kind of a magic box. So what exactly is deep learning? These are the images of dogs. Deep learning is a machine learning technique that teaches computers to do what comes naturally to humans. Learn by example. The robot gets trained with photos as example. Now this is very different than hardwiring a computer program so that it recognizes something. It actually learns. And that's where it's a magic box because you don't really control how it learns. You control the aspects that go in. The computer comes back and says, wait, I know what you are. It looks at the photograph of the dog and it's able to identify that it saw in the images. It says, you are a dog. Woof, woof. So that's an example of deep learning. You'll notice we didn't go in, we'll go into the, actually how it works behind the scenes for a neural network. But there's a bit of feeling of magic. And that's where the term deep learning comes in. And that's also the term where I like to call it a magic box. You put these things in here into the program and it starts running the deep learning and you have to understand those settings. But you don't have to follow the exactly what's going on in the deep learning model. That brings us to the question, how does deep learning do it? Remember the neuron? Scientists managed to build an artificial form of it that powers any deep learning based machine. So let's talk about artificial neural networks. What is an artificial neural network? To understand how an artificial neuron works, we need to understand how the real one works. First we have a dendrite input to the neuron. And you can see these little hairs that come in and they receive information. Then we have the cell body. Information processing happens here. So it takes all these different dendrite and information coming in from the different dendrites and it looks at that information. And then you have your axon, which is the output to the neuron. So there goes your axon and you see it goes all the way out. And at the very end it flanges out and each one of those little flanges connects to the dendrite or the hairs on the next one. Now let's see what an artificial neural network looks like. So in an artificial neural network, we have an input layer. So that could be an array of data. Each one of those white dots and the yellow bar would represent, say, a pixel in a the picture. Then you have the lines that connected to the hidden layers, which are your weights. And they add all those up on the hidden layers in each one of those dots, kind of like a cell, does something with all the inputs. And then it puts an output into the next hidden layer, and so on into the output layer. So information processing happens here. Input to the neuron, output to the neuron. So you can see how they are similar. We have an input which is our yellow bar coming in, and then you liken each of the hidden layers to being a neuron, and it passes it to the next one, and so on, and then you have an output to the next neuron, or an output to the real world. A neural network is a system of hardware and or software, patterned after the operation of neurons in the human brain. Neural networks, also called artificial neural networks, is a way of achieving deep learning. How does artificial neural networks work? Let us find out how does an artificial neural network work. Hey Siri, what is the time now? It's 12.30 in the morning. Thanks. Let's find out how she recognizes speech. Here is a neural network and the different layers on it. So we have our input layer, our hidden layers, and the output layer. This is the sentence that needs to be recognized by the network. What is the time? So when it comes in, each one comes in as a pattern of sound. So what is the time? First, let's consider the word what. And you have W-H-A-T. 
And you can see each one of those in the sound bar probably looks a little different than that, just a representation, comes in as a different pattern. Now we will split the sound wave for the letter W into smaller segments. So we split off W, and then we take W and we analyze just W. As the amplitude is varying in the sound wave for W, we collect the values at different intervals and form an array. So we have 0.5, 1.5, 1.7, 1.9, that might be the different amplitudes coming in. And we feed the array of amplitudes to the input layer. So each one of those goes into its own box on the input layer. Random weights are assigned to each interconnection between input and hidden layer. So remember all those little lines? I said those are special weights. Now we're going to start by doing it randomly. We always start with random because if you start with some kind of preset identical pattern, like if you set them all to three, it takes forever to train it and you're less likely to get a good result. Where random works really well in this. The weights are multiplied with the inputs and a bias is added to form the transfer function. So we make a sum of all the weights times the value. So you take 0.5, which is your x coming in, and we're going to multiply that by w1, w2, w3, so on. And then we get to the next level, we're going to add those together coming in, what's coming in. So we add the weight times x. And there's always a bias added in. If you ever build your own neural network, don't forget to add the bias in. Otherwise, it tends to not work quite as well. You need that extra layer in there to help it. Weights are assigned to the interconnection between the hidden layers. The output of the transfer function is fed as an input to the activation function. So the output from one hidden layer becomes the input to the next hidden layer. Acoustic model contains the statistical representation of each distinct sound that makes a word. And so we start building these acoustical models and as these layers separate them out, they'll start learning what the different models are for the different letters. Lexicon contains the data for different pronunciations of every word. So we have the lexicon at the end where we end up with the A, B, C, D and it identifies the different letters in there. Now the the term acoustic model and the term lexicon are specific to this domain, the domain of understanding speech. Certainly when you're doing photographs and other things, you'll have different labels on here, but the process is going to be the same. And finally we get our output layer. Following the same process for every word and letter, the neural network recognizes the sentence you said. What is the time? So it identifies a W H A T and then identifies that that's one word. What is the time? And so on. It's 12.30. That way Siri can look up the time and read it back to you. So let's look at the advantages of an artificial neural network. So gentlemen, could you tell me the advantages of an artificial neural network? It's amazing how many times I've been in that situation where I have to explain to the people making the decisions in the company. It's amazing how many times I've been in that space where I have to explain to the owner of the company what the artificial intelligence and the neural network actually do. What are the advantages of an artificial neural network and what it can do for them and how it works? So, an artificial neural network, outputs aren't limited entirely by inputs, and results given to them initially by an expert system. This ability comes in handy for robotics and pattern recognition systems. Artificial neural networks have the potential for high fault tolerance. Artificial neural networks are capable of debugging or diagnosing a network on their own. Very common use these days is to go through all the log files and sort them out. Thousands of log files if you're in, working as an admin. Nonlinear systems have the capability of finding shortcuts to reach computational expensive solutions. So we see this in banking where by hand they have an Excel spreadsheet and then they start building codes around that Excel spreadsheet and over 20 years they might build a repertoire of all these functions and the neural network comes up with the same answers done in days, weeks, or even a month for a huge bank. So let's take a look a little bit more because I mentioned a couple applications of artificial intelligence there, but let's dig deeper into the applications of artificial intelligence. Let's look at some of the real life this is stuff going on right now in our world. We're in such an exciting time with the neural networks and the machine learning and the artificial intelligence development. So let's take a little look at some of the current applications going on in real life. And you can use your imagination to dig for some new ones that we don't have listed here because it's so limitless the amount of applications that are being worked on right now or being implemented. Handwriting recognition. Neural network is used to convert handwritten characters into digital characters that the system can recognize. Stock exchange prediction. If you've ever worked with stock exchange, which I have, it is so fickle to track. I mean, it is really hard to understand. There are many factors that affect the stock market. Neural network can examine a lot of factors and predict the prices on a daily basis, helping the stockbrokers. So right now, it's still at the intro phase where it helps them, and they really have to look closely at it. When you realize that we generate 
generate over three terabytes a day just from the stock exchange here in the United States. That's a lot of data to dig through and you have to sort it out before you even start focusing on even one stock. Traveling salesman problem. It refers to finding the optimal path to travel between all cities in an area. Neural network helps solve the problem, providing higher revenue at a minimal cost. Logistics is huge. Just the logistics that we talk about salesmen traveling from town to town, logistics are used by Amazon. Amazon loves to ship their packages and they have empty space on their trucks. So they'll pre-ship packages and fill that empty space on who they think will buy it. Saves them a lot of time and people are a lot happier because they get it tomorrow instead of having to wait three weeks. Image compression. Idea behind data compression, neural network is to store, encrypt, and recreate the actual image again. So we can optimize our compression and data. Images are the biggest one but it's used in all kinds of data. Wonderful application to save hard drive and to optimize being able to read it back out again. Those are just a few and like I said use your mind to dig deeper. And let's take it even further. We're going to go a step further here and let's look at the future of deep learning. And here we are. <laughs> That's not me. Thank goodness. A wonderful person there reading her crystal ball. I'll tell you what I see in the future more personalized choices for users and customers all over the world. I certainly like that when I go in there and whatever online ordering system starts referring stuff to me. Local company here where I live that uses this where you can take a picture and it starts looking for what you want based on your picture. So if you see a couch you like, it starts looking for furniture like that or clothing. I think it's mainly clothing. Hyper-intelligent virtual assistants will make life easier. If you played with Google Assistant or Siri or any of those, you can see how they're slowly evolving and they're just now getting over that hump where a virtual assistant can do all kinds of things, even pre-write your email response for you. New forms of algorithm for learning methods would be discovered. There's always something rolling out and they've had some really cool research in this area. Again, this stuff is such a, we're just in the infant stage of artificial intelligence and neural networks and actually applying them to the real world. Wonderful time to jump in. Neural networks will be a lot faster in the future. Neural network tools will be embedded in every design surface. We already see that, that you can buy a little mini neural network that plugs into a really cheap processing board or into your laptop. So the hardware is starting to come out that goes right in there where you can dump it on there and that makes it also faster. So because it's on the hardware instead of the software side. Neural networks will be used in the field of medicine, agriculture, physics, discoveries, just everything you can imagine. We see this today where it's going from a PhD student in medicine trying to understand T cells and understand the statistic analysis of that to cure people, to help keep them healthy, to help find out how we heal, to something that anybody can go access and process the data on. They're working on shared data systems. This concept of it being used in these different fields and these different domains is huge. The world's wide open for anybody jumping out there to start exploring them and start learning neural networks. So with that, I want to thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. You can also post questions and comments down below on the YouTube video, and we'll try to get back to you on that. Again, thank you for joining us today. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.